Hey, I'm Adam Jessica from ProudMoney.com. In this video, we are going to do some credit card predictions for the year 2021. But before we do that, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not already. And if you have already, I thank you for doing so. So last year at this time, I did a predictions video for what might happen in the credit card industry for the year 2020. And pretty much all of it was wrong. But I would say that probably no one got any of their predictions for the year 2020 right, no matter what industry we are talking about or anything that might happen in 2020. So I'm going to give myself a mulligan here and we are going to start all over for the year 2021 and look at some uh, expectations, predictions, some things that maybe should happen, but I'm not quite sure if they'll happen, all that kind of stuff for the year 2021. All right, first prediction and one that I feel pretty confident about is that there are going to be changes to the Chase Sapphire cards. In particular, the Chase Sapphire Preferred card is almost screaming for some sort of change. I don't want to say an overhaul necessarily, but there definitely is going to be something happening with that card, partially in reaction to what Chase has already done with its Freedom cards adding some significant rewards, benefits to the uh, Chase Freedom Unlimited and the Chase Freedom Flex earlier in 2020. It almost made the Chase Sapphire Preferred a little less desirable. And so now it feels like that card's got to get better in reaction to the fact that these no annual fee cards have gotten better and maybe even better than this card that has the $95 annual fee. Now you still have the uh, Chase Travel Partners with the Chase Sapphire Preferred and you still have the 25% boost on your points if you use it through Chase's Ultimate Rewards Portal. So that is still an attractive thing, but it feels like this card needs something more. One thing that I could see happening is potentially Chase deciding to go two X points across the board on all of your purchases with that card, but an increase in the annual fee. So right now we're looking at a $95 annual fee with that card. I would not be surprised if maybe they did that, but increase that annual fee to around $150. I think that would be a pretty attractive card for a lot of people. You would think of it sort of like a 2% cashback card, getting 2x points across the board, but you would have that travel piece as well, those travel partners or getting that boost on those points through the Chase Travel Portal. I could see some people being pretty happy with that card, wanting that card if they didn't have it, or people that had the card now staying with it if that were to happen. Chase Sapphire Reserve, it also feels like needs a little tinkering, probably less so than with the Chase Sapphire Preferred, but early in 2020, Chase increased the annual fee to $550 on this card without really increasing anything else in terms of what you were getting from rewards and benefits. So again, with what they have done to some of their other cards, you have to imagine they're going to do something more here. Now, again, what can they do to it? You have a lot of travel benefits on this card. It's giving you 3x travel and dining. You have some temporary benefits that are, uh, you know, in response to COVID and the fact that people couldn't use this card for travel as much. But I think those temporary things are going to go away and they're going to have to come up with something new. Maybe, again, like what I just said with the Chase Sapphire Preferred, maybe you do a 3x across the board on this card. You have a big enough annual fee. Maybe you could do a 3x points across the board, but you make some cuts otherwise that were maybe not as attractive or weren't used as much by Chase cardholders. Maybe you reduce that 50% boost on the uh, points when used through the Chase Ultimate Rewards Portal, knock that down to 25% like the Chase Sapphire Preferred, but you're getting more points on your everyday purchases. I could see maybe something like that happening. Now, that does feel a little bit like you're giving a lot more than you were giving before without making much of a change to the annual fee. So I don't know, but they're going to have to do some tinkering with that. And, you know, if they did 3X across the board, I think people would be extremely excited about that card, especially if you kept most of those uh, uh, travel benefits that come with the card. But we will see. Definitely going to be some changes to the Chase Sapphire cards in 2021. Second prediction, credit card bonuses will head back down again. Over the last three to six months, we have seen some kind of crazy credit card bonuses out there and maybe surprising in the fact that the economy has not been all that great. But I think what the credit card companies have done is said, you know, if you are someone that qualifies for our cards, we really need you right now. And so they have sort of fallen over themselves to try to get people to sign up for cards. Maybe people that weren't really thinking about getting a new credit card, but then they saw those bonuses and 
maybe couldn't help themselves. So what that has meant to some extent is that we have a lot of points and miles that have sort of flooded the market over the last three to six months. And now we're starting to see sort of a light at the end of the tunnel here, I think with the uh, COVID vaccines coming on the market. So you could see late spring, early summer, they're really being a huge demand for travel. I talked about this in another video and what that could potentially mean. And that could mean that the airlines and the hotels have so much demand that they don't want to uh, you know, give away those award seats or those award rooms to people that have all these points and miles. So perhaps they would devalue those points and miles by making you have to use more points or more miles in order to get one of their seats or one of their rooms. And so you could have some potentially unhappy customers. You could have some unhappy travel companies who don't want so many of these bonus miles showing up in people's accounts because then they are going to want to, uh, you know, turn around and use them because they're hungry to travel again. So it could be kind of a mess in 2021. And I just don't see that the big bonuses that have come around here in 2020 to try to grab cardholders can possibly continue, at least not for very much longer. So I would expect that if you want one of those big bonuses, you probably should jump on them soon because they are going to head back down. Number three prediction, an Airbnb credit card in 2021. It just seems like a natural for the progression of Airbnb's business. They just went public had their IPO, they had a bad 2020 like everybody else, but maybe not as bad as some of the other travel companies. Some people were willing to stay in an Airbnb when they weren't willing to stay in a hotel. So for the people that were traveling, Airbnb maybe didn't get hit quite as hard. So anyway, their business in general continues to do well, at least relatively well, and it makes sense that a credit card would be part of the equation at some point. So. 2021 seems like it would be the year to potentially do that. It would have to be sort of a points card, I think, versus a uh, travel benefits card, probably, probably points for Airbnb for staying at Airbnb, and then maybe some points for different everyday shopping stuff as well. So we'll see if that happens here in 2021. Prediction number four, we'll see a new 5% rotating category card in 2021. This is something that has been popular with consumers with the cards that are already out there on the market and I'm surprised there are not more copycats. I have three candidates for banks that I think potentially could do it. Number one, Wells Fargo, still trying to help their image over the very many missteps they have had. I could see them doing that to try to make a splash in 2021. Number two, potentially Capital One. I could see them jump in here. And then number three, is going to sort of take me on to my number five prediction, number three, Goldman Sachs. And I say that leads me to my number five prediction because I think Goldman Sachs will roll out their first credit card that is a Goldman Sachs branded credit card in 2021. They are the bank behind the Apple card. They are just in the process of buying the GM card business and becoming the issuer of that. They have a, uh, an agreement with Amazon to do some um, giving credit to Amazon small business partners. So they have so far gotten into the consumer market with other partners. I think 2021 is the time that Goldman Sachs takes that a step further in terms of getting into the consumer market and making their name more known there. This has been a big push in Goldman Sachs to get into the consumer market, both on the banking and credit card end. So it is a natural extension. Maybe it would be that rotating 5% category card, maybe something else from Goldman Sachs in 2021. Number six prediction, sort of a retread from last year. And the reasoning is because I think 2020 slowed everything down in terms of the plans that various banks had. And that is the fact that the truest brand, I think, will finally come together and be something where they are offering some new credit cards on the market. Truest being the brand that was SunTrust and BB&T being combined. Both of those banks still offering their own credit card products now, but when when they are together, they are going to have a bigger footprint across the United States and some new products out there. It'll be interesting to see if they become a real player in the credit card market or if they just, you know, kind of have some new stuff, but it's not all that interesting. But I think in 2021, we'll find out one way or the other.
Number seven, or maybe it's number eight, I'm not quite sure where we are in the numbering, but that is the idea that some of these fintech companies that are offering credit cards that have rolled out over the last year or two are either going to get acquired or are going to come together. On the acquisition end, I could see Pedal being acquired by a company perhaps like Capital One, Pedal offering cards for people who are new to credit and some people that maybe have had some credit problems. I could see them being maybe a match with Capital Capital One or another company. Uh, in terms of cards coming together, there's just a lot of these fintechs right now that are trying to do similar things here with mobile banking and with you know different credit card promises in terms of you know not uh, having credit scores be part of the application process or whatever. It seems like some of these are going to have to come together if they ever want to get enough critical mass to really be something in the marketplace. So I think there'll be some consolidation of some of these startups we've seen over the last couple of years. And then real quick here to finish off, I'm going to mention a couple of things that kind of seem like they might be happening in the past, and I'll just bring them up again, and maybe they will happen in 2021. One of those was a rumor about a year ago that Capital One might be coming out with a card that would compete with the Chase Sapphire Reserve and the Amex Platinum. To me, it seemed kind of a weird idea because it doesn't really seem to be Capital One's game so much, but perhaps we will see that happen in 2021. Supposedly, there were some plans in you would think that 2020 would have sort of, you know, put those plans, put that on the back burner, but maybe it will go back to the front burner. And the second thing kind of coming from in the past is this idea that American Express is working on this luxury card that would be better than the Platinum, but not quite as high class as the American Express Black card, the Centurion card. So maybe we will see something in between there. I'm trying to remember what it's called. I think it was the Optio is what uh, uh, the rumors were saying this card was going to be. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me to put a card between the Platinum and the Black card, but perhaps we will see that in 2021. All right, that's all I got. Any predictions that you have or things you would like to see in 2021, put them in the comment section below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. And as always, please go to proudmoney.com where we do credit card reviews, we talk personal finance, we talk deals and all sorts of other fun stuff too. Thanks for watching. Bye.